Hi, all you racing fans. This is IKF expert Phil Fow wishing you guys all a great time, and you're listening to the Northwest Race Report. Let's go get them. Talk to Corey Markham at the end of it. We'll get back to the fart carts here and uh, let you know. God dang it. I'm sorry about that, guys. And here we go. Post race, Terry Bridges, Northwest Race Report. Corey Markham ends up second in uh, KT Light. Just a, just a hair off. Yeah, just a little bit off. Need a little more. So uh, what did you think of the 21? He, he was pretty good. He was really good off. Yeah, he's, uh, his card is definitely handling really good. I'll, uh, hopefully he comes with the BK. Absolutely. So tell me, you know, I look at turn one, and I, that's, a, that's a crazy corner. That, I mean, it, it, it's like it narrows up. Oh, yeah, definitely narrows up. Uh, you have to hit it totally different than a regular turn. But, uh, no, it's a good one. So how about how about the 23? Was it, I mean, it was really close. It just uh, took off. You said you changed everything around? Yeah, we uh, changed the whole cart and did a whole different setup. We're going to go back, put it on the scales, change it up, get ready for the BK. Right on. So you can do anything next week, or is it all going to be prep for uh, for the BK? Uh, a little bit of prep, uh, a little bit of moving to a new house. So. Right on. Corey Markham, thanks a lot, man. Great job. Yeah, thank you. Oh, baby. Uh, of, at the uh, end of the day on Saturday, um, so we're back. Hey, how is it? Is everything working now? Okay, good, loud and clear. Good deal. Okay, so sorry about that. Um, you know this Windows 10. I- I'm telling you, man. Every time it updates, it's it's like it it changes everything. So my apologies. I'm sorry about that. So we'll kind of go backtrack here. Uh, first thing uh, that we that we covered is uh, Friday night of the BK. You guys want to know this? Come and check out a, a live vinyl wrap installation and demo and clinic. Uh, they're going to install some fresh blue line graphics on the uh, Northwest Race Report giveaway wrap winner, uh, Tim Lawrence, on his number 16 UAS ride. So you can come on by, learn the tips and tricks of applying your own kit, or just come by and say hi. Grab some limited edition BLG stickers and Northwest Race Report decals. We'd love to see you there. That's Friday night. Uh, Joe Ransom will be putting it in. And uh, so it'll be pretty cool. Uh, main events, uh, WHR Motorsports. We'll go through those quickly again. Jake Benson won the LCQ and uh, KT Light. Uh, looks like uh, Jaden Roberts, Brooklyn Concerts, McKenna Morgan were in mini cart. Uh, Andrea Smith wins KT Light. Levi Harless and Jake Benson, one, two, three. Schoolboy went to Carson Sundholm, Tyler McLeod, and Parker Hadlock. Uh, Pro went to Spencer Constance. Alex Hantel was second. Bobby uh, Frankhauser, third. Uh, KT Heavy went to Jake Benson. Jay Barnes, second. Spencer Constance, third. The Open Class went to Alex Hantel. Reese Wickard and Tyler Weber. T. Webb getting it done. And uh, that wrapped up WHR Motorsports. Uh, those winners there. Congratulations to everybody there. Moving on to Salem. Uh, boy, howdy. Chris Hatch comes back after getting knocked off by Steve King here two weeks ago. He wins it. Tony Williamson was in the house. He was second. Greg Norman in third. Um, KT Heavy went to Corey Markham, and um, he was pretty good. Kyle Wick, though, I'm telling you, people, uh, he is – Kyle Wick was a stud. He was – first time there, first time he'd seen the racetrack was on Friday night. Uh, he was a total stud. He was second. Chuck Jones, like I said, uh, Chuck Jones, that was probably uh, the best I've seen him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he was really, I mean, he was there. He was just a tick free, but, man, he was uh, was there. Yeah, him and and Wick were battling it out. Absolutely. So, I mean, Chuck Jones, is a uh, he's going to be a force to uh, reckon with come BK time. I mean, because he was... He was fast. I mean, he had uh, he wasn't lacking on any horsepower. That's for sure. Um, UAS went to uh, uh, the Rocket Ronnie Cox. He debuted the uh, new Northwest Race Report uh, scheme, which I thought was pretty awesome. Looked better in person than it did in the pictures. It was sweet. Um, and you know, he was good. I mean, for just loading off the trailer. I mean, people could say what they want. Someone say, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, I, Look, for just rolling off the trailer, he was de- he was more than decent. 1080s, you know. I mean, for just rolling off the trailer, that's not 
That's not too shabby. That's really pretty good uh, for that Collins prepared uh, 450. And, uh, you know, hats off to Uncle Chuck for, for running our rap on there. We really, really, really appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we're looking for Ronnie to put it up in the front. Yeah, for real. So, uh, fart carts, we got a little crazy. Uh, like I said, uh, DeMars was leading it. Clark was second there. And then uh, in the late stages, uh, Clark gets by uh, DeMars. So he's leading it. Uh, Billy Weber uh, is there. Now, I, I've only seen Billy Weber run a couple times, right? So I, I don't know a whole lot uh, about him. I know he races some asphalt stuff. But, um, yeah, well, he makes a he makes a daring up over the berm. Uh, Hail Mary into turn three on the coming to the flag, and it takes out Clark, who was on his way to win it, right? Oh. Just up, you know, yeehaw, you know, uh, you know the, uh, uh, you know, uh, it's like a off road, you know. Sure. What's that guy's name? The Iron Man. Uh, yeah. The uh, 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 Berm Boy. Yeah, I don't know, but anyway, uh, so Clark doesn't like it, mm-hmm. so Clark takes his deal and on the cool down lap, uh, piles it right at just. Woods it and drives it straight into Weber's ride. Oh, no. So we got a mess, you know. So how that goes is it ends up Renee Angel wins it because what they did was they discussed it. And rather than they were both kind I mean, both kind of at fault. So I don't know. I mean, Weber made the he started it, but I don't know that it was intentional. I just think it was a hero, you know, bonsai thing. But nonetheless, uh Jason DQs both of them just so nobody's feelings are hurt, right? So uh, that gives the win to Renee. Uh, Justin DeMar second, Rich Spear third, Mike Michelson fourth. Um, so that was how that went. Um, Super Sport uh, went to Dennis Flint again. again. But, but here is the coolest thing of the whole thing. Big Daddy, Wade Bauman, the young kid. He's like 12 years. I mean, I don't know how old he's, he's a little guy. He's second. He beats Ty Easton. Mm-hmm. Ty Easton was third. Jeff Paris fourth. That was so cool. I wanted him to. Um, I, I I wanted him to uh, just get it. You know, so bad. Uh, so uh, yeah. So uh, like I said, and then KT Light went to or KT uh, Heavy went to 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 uh, Markham, but KT Light went to Kyle Wick, who was awesome. I'm telling you, it was awesome. That CRE Yamaha was fast and the clutch was dialed perfectly because that thing came off the corner like jake the bear i'm telling you what right now so as it stands seth waldo leads the kid carts in uh salem speedway championship points uh fon Farah leads the junior twos uh seth waldo and junior two four cycle he uh leads the way junior two two cycle jasmine hildebrand time again racing leads the way uh junior one jamie weber junior one four uh kt light Corey markham on top of the board, Dan Spear second, Brandon Day third. 488 for Markham, 388 for Spear, 288 for Day. Um, Mike Flippin leads the AKRA. That really doesn't matter because, uh, I mean, it matters, but there's just not they're not doing that anymore. So, Corey Markham, KT Heavy, he leads the way. Look at this, 496. Brandon Day, 464. Justin Beard, 452. Dan Kravitz, 452. And Darren Markham, 448. Wow. Yes, huh? That's the point standings going on in heavy. Uh, UAS, uh, Renee Angel, 290. Passanetti, 190. Stansbury, 100. Lawrence, 100. Uh, Terry, uh, Tim Lawrence, 98. Ronnie Cox, 100 now. Uh, fart cards, Chuck Waldall leads the way, 360. Julie Day, 356. Justin DeMars, 298. Uh, Michelson and Nick Handley. Uh, Chris Hatch leads the way. Uh, this is another close one. Hatch, 492. Brian Green, 472. Norman, 388. Steve King, 378. And Mike Clark, 272. That's pretty good. Super, uh, super Sport Heavy. Uh, Dennis Flint leads the way. 490 to 484 over Ty Easton. Uh, Jeff Paris and Wade Bauman, each with 460, tied for third. And Dave Wooten. Uh, looks like, uh, what do you got? Four... 408. So that's kind of the point standings there for Slideway Saturday. That's pretty cool. And uh, let's see here. We are going to uh, probably here pretty soon. We're going to be uh, talking to our in the seat guest, uh, Mr. Shannon Halbert 
from uh, GoFast. Um, Can't wait for that. HP.com. He's a clutch guru. And he does a lot, a lot of the El Diablo stuff. I didn't, you know, I didn't realize that was a a motor, a Diablo. That's the Horseman little piston port thing that they run. Oh, hmm. I didn't realize that it, either. Yeah, it looks. It, it's kind of like an H, one of those HPV things. You know what I mean? So I mean, basically, it's a piston port. So here, here's some other good news. While we're waiting for uh, Mr. Halbert, um, uh, Craig Collins, he's gonna be there. He got a ride. From guess who? Hmm, None guess. other than Sean Carr. Nice. So he's going to have an HRE, a Doug Hugler Racing Engines, prepared Yamaha. with, with uh, It's going to have the full body on everything. So he's going he's gonna to be running uh, KT Light at the, at, the, at the BK. Nice. Glad to hear it. Oh, man. Mr. Shannon. Halbert, how are you, sir? How you doing? Are you with me? Yep. All right, good deal. Hey, uh, just so you know, again, Friday night uh, at the BK, come check out the uh, a live vinyl wrap installation, demo, and clinic uh, as they install some blue line graphics on the Northwest Race Report. Giveaway winner Tim Lawrence on his number 16 UAS ride. Come learn the tips and tricks of applying your own kit or just come by and say hi. Grab some limited edition decals from BLG and the Northwest Race Report. And remember, they've got over 50 different wing wraps and uh, all kinds of cool stuff, as well as helmet wraps now. So be sure you check it out, www.blg.blue. Our guest tonight is a horsepower guru. Um, boy, he does a lot of clutches. He's here to clear up a lot of stuff, Mr. Shannon Halbert. Shannon, thanks for being on the show, man. Dude, yeah. Um, he said last night it was hilarious. He sends me a message. He says, dude, I am spamming everybody in karting. <laughs> <laughs> Super cool. So, well, you, you know, I, I, think, I think the radio show is, is definitely one thing uh, that we need because we, we really don't get enough exposure as it is. So, you know, it, it, anything like this is, is a good thing. So I'm, I'm on board with things like that. Well, thank you, man. Um yeah, I. Uh, that is. They're talking about you're not very loud, but uh, it's as loud as we can get it. I do believe. Let's see here. Okay, so uh, how, about, how about that? Is that any better? Yeah, that's a lot better. That's a okay, ton. That, this, ton. this is speakerphone, so <laughs> that's no problem. So you know, give us a little bit of background about Shannon Halbert. I mean, what? Uh, how did you get? How did you get to be the clutch guy? You know, we we started karting uh, this year will actually be 25 years uh, since I ran my first kart race. Um, and, and, you know, long story short, back before the Internet and everything, uh, you, you kind of either paid to have somebody do it or you learned how to do it yourself. Uh, so we, we didn't have a whole lot of money, so we ended up being the, the do-it-yourself guys. <laughs> Uh, that ran from, you know, engines to clutches and this and that and the other. Uh, so, you know, as the years progressed on, uh, you know, I had carts, nephews had carts, brothers had carts. Uh, and one of the biggest expenses besides engines was clutches. Uh, so, you know, we, we took it upon ourselves to just say, okay, let's figure these things out. Um, we were running, uh, you know, five, six carts. That turned into, you know, doing clutches for you know, 15, 20 carts. Uh, and then I decided one day, I said, you know what, it's working pretty good. Uh, let's just go public with it and see what happens. And at that point, the the, <laughs> the, the, the waterfall started, and, and it's never stopped. We've You we've opened the floodgates, much. didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ever, ever since that day, uh, you know, and we've, we've done it for a, a long time now, but uh, we didn't go public with it until a few years ago. Well, that's awesome, man. So, okay. So, with that being said, um, you know, I mean, the clutch is a dire part of of what we're doing here, right? I mean, it, it's putting it's putting the horsepower to the ground. I mean, yeah. So you probably see a lot of crazy stuff there, but I mean, really, um, other than you know, bolting it on, right? You you want to make sure that your your air gap is right. 
and you want to make sure that your your spring heights are, are where they're supposed to be. Those seem to me like those are pretty crucial things, are they not? Yeah. So, yeah, the, the spring height, <clears throat> excuse me, um, the, the, they, they all kind of work together. Um, your, your spring height is going to produce a certain spring pressure. Uh, with, with that pressure, a lot of people look at it kind of backwards. The springs are not what engages the clutch. Uh, the the levers actually engage the clutch. All we're looking at is a transfer of energy. The levers and the force on the lever has to overcome the pressure of that spring. Um, you know, in, instead of going through and and taking every spring off and and measuring you know every one hundred thousandth of of whatever, uh, you know, a, a simple way to do it is spring height. Uh, a certain spring height on a certain spring is going to produce a certain pressure. And at that pressure, your lever, whatever it may weigh, is going to overcome that after a certain amount of energy, which is however many RPMs you're running. Uh, I know it sounds kind of complicated. No, but, uh, it's just it's <laughs> what they need to hear. I mean, it's okay. You know, you can never – what do pro athletes do when they struggle? They exactly. go. They go back to the basics, right? So exactly. That's, that's important. I mean, we can never hear that stuff. So, okay, that being said – what are, I mean, what are what's the biggest mistake people do with 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 clutches? There's got to be something that you go that you see all the time that you go, holy cow! You know why are why are people doing this? The the biggest and and this is this is kind of a uh, of a thing that we have had an incredible amount of success with. Um, if you watch the races at Daytona, um, Cole Pashang swept. Uh, his class down there, he actually passed, uh, you know, they do a Le Mans style start, uh, you know, for the, for the actual super speedway road course race. Uh, and he actually passed eight, nine guys just going down the straightaway. Uh, one of the biggest things that we see is clutches that they, they engage extremely hard. Um, people always say, well, I want it to snap my neck off. Uh, when, when you get a clutch like that, all you're doing is wasting energy. You don't want uh, you don't want a clutch that just hammers all the time. It wears parts out. It's a shock on the system. You know, the uh, imagine taking a you know a, a truck and dumping the clutch on it at 5,000 RPM at every red light you go to. You know, you're not going to be fast, and pretty soon you're going to start to play parts. Yeah, that's hard um, on stuff. A, a nice smooth engagement on the clutch, a positive engagement, something that that works more like an automatic transmission. When you hit the throttle, you pull. Uh, that, that's what we that's what we shoot for. And using you know specific uh, lever combinations, specific springs, uh, we can get that type of, of acceleration. You want to accelerate. You want to go fast. You don't want to look fast. Type of thing. <laughs> well, now, <clears throat> excuse me. Lip, go ahead. Well, I'm I'm con- I'm curious that you know there's a lot of different spring colors out there, and I don't think that people really understand that. The norm is everybody wants to put red springs on on stuff, but it's really specific to your motor combination uh, as to to what springs you pick. And I, I, I've particularly had people call me that are running two stroke motors and running red springs on them, and and I know that that's not a good combination. Correct. <clears throat> I've, I've actually, um, as far as jack shaft clutches and, and things like that, I've had a lot of experience with those now. I can set up any clutch now to run a jack shaft type setup. Uh, I actually sent a two disc Tomar out um, to one of our listeners, <laughs> actually, right now, um, and it's set up for a jack shaft. It just has to have the proper combination. The, the problem with something like a red spring. You can get the proper engagement RPMs, but the problem is it's going to be such a harsh engagement that the two-stroke is going to bog down, and you're you're just going to kill that engine because it doesn't have the type of torque that you know a clone or an animal or something like that has. So we really need to lessen the load on that engine so it can stay humming and just keep going. 
See that that makes total sense to me, and 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 I I can wrap my head around that, and and I don't think a lot of people understand well, like what you just said is it's it is too much for the motor. So um, by by being able to make it work, sure you can make it work, but it's not good for your combination. You're basically leaving horsepower on the table because you're using it up in your clutch, correct? Exactly. Like I said, it's a it's a transfer of energy. All we want to do we're taking the energy from the engine, transferring it through the clutch to the rear axle any energy that we lose in between those two places is in you know that's that's where second place is you know the guy the guy that's going fast the guy that's in first he's the one that's not losing the energy you know whether it be through chassis through clutch you know th- this whole sport's about uh, you know a, a consistent flow of energy around that track if you look at it that way you know it, it kind of starts to come together a little bit I've never had it explained to me, excuse me, that way before. And that is a great analogy. That is exactly what's <laughs> happening because you want to be smooth through the corner and you want your motor to be smooth through engagement and everything else. That That's that's a great analogy. And I've never heard it given that way. See, you're, you're just, you're great like that. I got one other question for you. Uh, for a yep. lot of us out there that have the older style clutches, we'll just throw one out there as like an MDC. Is that something that I can send to you and you can put new life into that thing, i.e. make it a bully style because i don't think a lot of people know that that's available out there yes that is actually one of the most popular conversions uh we actually call it a hybrid conversion because we're basically taking two clutches and turning it into one um horseman has all but fallen out of the four-stroke market Um, yes they you know they don't want anything to do with it anymore. Uh, the old MDCs, the Grease Lightnings, uh, you know, things like that, uh, we actually we have a, a specific set of, uh, you know, spring weights, or not spring weights, but lever weights and spring settings uh, that, you know, we've, we've developed over time. It's been a, a time-tested trial type of thing. Um, and then we, uh, we actually swap it over to a... Uh, it looks like a bully basket, uh, but it's actually a, a solid basket. Um, takes the bully drivers. Um, well, I should say bully size drivers. We actually sell the SMC drivers. Uh, they are, you know, they're heat treated, hardened. Uh, they're they're an extremely good quality. I don't make a whole lot of money off of them, uh, but you know, the exchange for that is is having a good product out there. Um, other than that, the, the internals of these clutches really haven't changed a whole lot since about 1995. Um, so a whole lot of things will swap out. A whole lot of things will interchange. Um, normally, if, if you have an old MDC or, or a Grease Lightning or something like that, um, if it's a two-disc, which most of them are two-disc anymore, yep. uh, the two-disc rebuild runs $85, the basket's $25, and then a clutch is $20. So, you know... You're you're only looking at, you know, under 150 bucks, you know, depending on if you want to buy. Heck, that that even gives you enough money left over to buy an extra sprocket. Really, I mean, it does, and you're getting a solid clutch when that's all done with. I mean, not that to before that it was anything that was lacking, but that's a that's a solid clutch when you're done with it. Exactly, and and it's dependable. They are they are extremely resilient. I'm very impressed with the fact that we can take these clutches that were built, you know, 10, 15 years ago, go through them and and refurbish them, you know, granted, as as long as everything's in good working order, uh, and get the kind of performance out of them that we do. I mean, there's guys out there winning races every weekend on the same exact clutch. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, It's really, it's something good, because I hate for somebody to say, well, this can't be fixed, or just throw this away. Uh, type of thing that that doesn't sit well with me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it shouldn't it, there's so much good stuff out there and to to leave it on the shelf and just feel that you have to go buy a new bully because it's a bully that's that that's not out there i mean these these clutches are still good clutches they've always been good clutches and what you do to them really adds new life into them and lets you get a heck of a lot of use out of them i got i got one more question and uh what i've seen is a a yamaha on a jack shaft and they go and put a four disc bully clutch on it can you over clutch a motor you you can like i said just like the energy thing you can get to the point um 
and and it's mainly on your lower torque and your smaller engine. You can get to the point where there's there's really just so much rotational weight that you're trying to move and engage. Um, with that said, you also have to look at the thermal qualities of that clutch. Um, to be realistic, uh, the, the Red Devil clutch that we have, it's got extremely thick floater plates, and you can take a two-disc of those and just run it on just about anything. Uh, your heat dissipation and everything that takes the heat is in, you know, it's in your metal products. It's not, not necessarily in the friction disc. Um, so, you know, with that said, you could take a, a three-disc that, that's built proper and, and has lots of material uh, and, and actually have it work better than a four-disc. Okay. Because, you know, you don't have a super thin floater plate so you can fit in an extra disc. Gotcha. Um, the, the Yamahas, if you're, you know, if you're running a KT100, a, a proper setup two disc clutch or three disc clutch, I think is more than enough. Um, the four disc, you know, if you want to run it, then have at it. It's it's probably going to hurt you on acceleration some. Uh, but with that said, if it's properly set up, it's probably going to last forever too. So. Well, yeah, you're not gonna you're not gonna overpower it. That's for sure. But yeah. it just seems like a lot of rotating weight that's wasted energy. Like you said, if you can get a two disc to do the same thing, it's a lot less weight. So yeah, well, you know, and, and like I said, it's it's mainly with your lower horsepower stuff. Now, when you go to a modified, uh, you know, or something with some some pretty some pretty heavy horsepower. Or you know, torque is more important than the horsepower. Yes. Uh, you know, you you really don't notice a difference with stuff like that, but uh, you, you can definitely notice a heat. You know, the heat sometimes. Yeah, I, I agree with that hundred percent. Well, Shad, I got a question. So, number one, so now we've you talked the two disc and all that stuff. So now I, I remember back when I was doing it, there was the there was the four spring horseman, and then they came out with a six springer. Now looking at that. I would think that the six spring is going to be, I, I don't know why. I mean, I'm going to assume that it was because uh, it put more even pressure on the, on, on, on the disc. Is that right? With the, with the six springs all the way around it. Yeah. There's, there's two schools of thought on it. Uh, you do have, well, usually with the four spring, you end up having eight levers. So you actually have, more of a footprint against the pressure plate. Um, the reasoning behind a lot of it was to get the proper engagement. Most of your four spring horsemen and things like that were junior style clutches where you wanted to drop the engagement below, you know, 3,200 and, and stuff like that. Uh, so when you add an extra lever and take off two springs, um, you have more you've got more kinetic energy working against that spring that allows it to just completely drop the, you know, clutch through the bottom. Um, Bully has a four spring and it's, you know, it's really hard to get that clutch above, you know, 4,500 RPM, uh, even with super, super stiff springs in it. Um, <clears throat> the, the We're actually working on, on some other things that, that are going up to like an eight spring clutch. Wow. Um, just to provide, you know, that, that super soft, you know, constant acceleration. Um, it's, it's been in works for, for quite a while, but, uh, you know, we're always playing around with something new. There, there's always new developments. You know, you, you never you never grow by staying stagnant. Well, you um, know, sorry, Shannon, but, you know, you're saying uh, below 3,200, and then, and then I was, you know, seeing today that, you know, it was like 6,500 and, and, and that type of thing. Now – is that just where the four cycle? Because I remember when, uh, of course, it, of course, it wasn't four cycles; it was two cycle stuff. But you know, I mean, the yeah. the engagement there was, you know, you want to be, you know, nine four, nine eight, and then if you were a heavier guy, you went, you know, ten two, ten four, where you where you slipped it. So, is that just where the the difference lies in in, in the two cycle versus a four? Exactly, exactly, and and. And, you know, it's, it's the same concept. When Horseman came out with that wet, um, the wet four-spring style setup, uh, you know, granted, we were running four strokes at that time, but, you know, I've, I've been into a whole lot of them. Um, when, when you weigh out the lever weight 
and and things like that. When you do all the math, it really just shows that they were they were just trying to get a different style of engagement without uh, without without you know completely redesigning everything. Uh, you know the the four spring. You know, like you said, you know you could you could get a different stop, but if you wanted to go up higher. Uh, you really, you know, for an adult cart, you really needed that that extra couple springs uh, to provide the, you know, the higher engagement. Right. You know, like I said, without redesigning the entire thing. Right. Well, what about what about axle clutches? Do you, do you, do you see many of those? I, I hardly ever see any axle clutches. Um, we uh, we're a SMC dealer as well. SMC actually, you know, we we work pretty close with them. Um, and they've actually stopped making axle clutches. Yeah, they were um, big in road racing. I know for a, for I mean I think they ran them in a sprint a little bit, but uh, I I don't know that they ever were that they ever really well, caught on. It's it's one of those cost prohibitive things. You can pay five hundred bucks for a for an axle clutch, and that thing's going to last like two years. I mean, you're never going to rebuild it. Um, the problem is, you know, of course, sanctioning bodies have their say in it. So, you know, pretty much everybody says it has to be a dry centrifugal clutch mounted on the crank, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but uh, a lot of road course racers, a lot of road course racers that are running, you know, you, and, and, you know, we're not talking your standard clone and stuff like that, but uh, right. a lot of these laydown guys and stuff like that, they're they're running, you know, axle clutches. And, and like I said, with Horseman pretty much out of the market and, uh, you know, Tom at SMC said no, probably maybe a month ago uh that they weren't going to be producing any more clutches well um so i'm, I'm not really sure what's going to fill that void uh, right. to be honest well you know honestly i can tell you i mean when i was working for phil Fow, we, we we did a lot of road racing and we ran uh 200 stock in the, in the lay down thing people used to people look, used to look at us like we were crazy because that's when the axle well, burko had their axle clutch out and it was the craze. Everybody had one. But you know what? We had two four-spring horseman engine clutches. And everybody used to go, no way. And it was like, yeah. And you know what? Those things uh, those things were dialed. I mean, we never yeah. – I mean, it was – I mean, that thing hooked and pulled so hard with those engine clutches. And, I mean, it was uh, it was money. I mean, and we'd show up and people go, man, I can't believe you got engine clutches on. You know, it was like, well, yeah, you know, but it's still, I mean, uh, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, a lot of people look at it, you know, like I said, initial, initial purchase price. Cause when, when we first started running, you know, Blockzillas and things like that, I actually talked to Tom at SMC and I said, Hey, you know, what, what kind of clutch is going to hold up to something like this? And he flat out told me, he said, a big engine needs a big clutch. He said, get an axle clutch. He said, you'll run it all year long, never have to touch it. And, you know, but, you know, when you go price them out, 400 500 bucks, uh, you know, and then you can go buy, you know, one of ours or, or a bully or, or, you know, something like that for a fraction of that, <laughs> you know, you do the math and, and we've all got racers pockets. So <laughs> Amen to that. Well, you, so if I'm a racer, let's just say I'm running KT Light, KT, which we have a lot of here. Yeah. If I were to ask you advice, if I was to say, what's, if you were to give me a bit of advice on, on dialing my clutch, what would be the number one thing that you would tell me that uh, I, I should be doing or, or, or paying attention to? The number one thing you want to pay attention to is – really the amount of heat you're putting through that clutch um and 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 a lot of people ask us you know on a similar thing well how often do we need to rebuild them how often do we need to do this uh you know if, if your clutch is getting i wouldn't say warm or hot but if it's getting excessively hot if it's starting to slip if it's really inconsistent uh heat is a number heat's the number one killer of that um you know, you, you want to pay attention. The biggest mistake that a lot of people make with engagement is they just set it way too high. Um, I, I see that on a lot of sport or on a lot of two strokes. Uh, you know, the guy's got a KT one hundred. He's like, "Oh man, let's set her up for ten thousand nine. and then he wonders why his clutch is turning blue after two laps. Um, you know, you really want to see where that clutch. 
uh, you know, if you have a dyno sheet, that's perfect. Um, but there, there's there's several ways to, to dial in a clutch. Uh, the, the, the quickest and most foolproof way is to keep backing it down on the engagement until it starts to bog down and then turn it up a couple, two, three hundred RPM. That will get you right at your peak torque where it's going to pull the hardest every single time. There's no dyno that can set it like that. There's no, there's no nothing. That, that is your engine with you on the track, and it's custom tailored to how you're running it. Wow, so that's if you're ramming it up there, you're slipping it really hard. It starts to get hot. The hotter it gets, the more it slips. The more it slips, the hotter it gets. And then eventually, it's going to make its way back to me in a couple races, and I'm going to give you the talk about, hey, don't slip your clutch so high. <laughs> well, you you know, there's nothing better, at least at least two cycle wise. There's nothing better than the sound of a clutch that's coming in when it's right. Because when it's right, you you can you can hear the motor how it you know that you know that good that good pull that it comes off the corner. There's nothing prettier than that when the clutch is is set up. I'm gonna have to hire you for engine sound. <laughs> yeah, I, I've got a I've, I've got a few of them, but you know, just that nice. Uh, you you know what I'm talking about? It, it's just uh, yeah, when it comes yeah. off the bottom, it's got that nice. Uh, you know when it's right. I mean, you can just you can almost can, just can, hear it. Yeah, you can kind of hear it lug down, and then and then you hear it. You know, it starts to sing after that point. Well, yes, it does. Um, yep. And that that lug is exactly where I'm talking about. If you get it to the point where it starts to lug down. You know, either on a takeoff or, you know, and, and obviously if you've got it geared all wrong, it's going to do that anyway. But, you know, if you're close on everything else, you start playing with your clutch engagement. When you get to that little bog, that blah, and you just turn it up two or 300 RPM, and then you're going to be a rocket. That's, uh, you know, that that's the dead nuts way to set one perfect. doesn't matter if it's a four-stroke, two-stroke, you know, a Geo Metro, whatever. You're you're in your torque band at that point. You're you're going. Well, before we go, I got I got. We're gonna play the the quick five here. But um, how many Burkos do you see come through there? Uh, in a blue moon. In a blue <laughs> moon. I've, I've only had my hands on maybe three of them, dude. So. But you gotta say, a metal shoe on a metal drum. I mean, I'm telling yeah. you, when when those things hooked up, they were hooked up. Which I won't. I won't turn anything down. You know, if somebody calls me up and says, "Hey, I've got a whatever from 1963," I, hey, send it in. You know, if I can't do anything with it, I'll just send it back to you. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm always game to learn. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've only had my hands on a, on you know, like I said, maybe three of them. Um, yeah, they and, were. And, you know, you either knew how to set them up or you didn't. People struggled exactly. with them, so I mean that was kind of the deal there. But uh, okay, so the quick five. You know how? Have you heard us play this? Uh, I, you I, know, I, I don't think I have. I've got five questions for you. Actually, uh, yeah, well, five, six. You know, it kind of varies, but you can't really think about it. You got to give me the first thing that comes off your mind. Um, oh, that's dangerous. Nah, I'm not gonna hang you with anything uh, too too uh, too personal. Um, <laughs> Really uh, 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 well, that's okay. I mean, you could just be honest. Um, let's see. Uh, horseman or Burko? Horseman. Dry clutch or wet? Wet. Clones or animals? Animal. Animal, animal, animal. I like you. I like you. Race like gas you. or alcohol? Alcohol. Prep or no prep? Prep as much as possible. In a in 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 a four cycle race where you were gonna have them set up the clutches, whose clutch would come off the corner better? Wilma Flintstones or Betty Rubbles? <laughs> if, if if I was setting up both of the clutches, no. If they had to, who do you, whose do you think would come off the corner better? W- Wilma's or Betty's? thinking betty because i think she's a little prettier good answer good answer i got i got one more to add to this because i i follow you on facebook and uh are you a charcoal or are you a wood uh barbecue propane 
propane. That ain't barbecuing. Sorry, that's called grilling. He cooks some really, <laughs> really, really good stuff. I, I follow you all the time, and you're always cooking something, and I love that. But I'm just letting uh, it be known. That is called grilling. That's not barbecuing. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I honestly don't, uh, I don't like bar, you know, the barbecue necessarily that much. Uh, uh, there, there, there's a really great barbecue place. Um, it's uh, in, in Greensburg, Indiana, called Pork and More. And that guy ruined me on barbecue from anybody else because his is so flipping good. You can never imitate it. And I've tried so many times that I've just gave up. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, while I got your uh, shit, go ahead. I, I've got to cook for, uh, you know, I've, we've got the we've got the two boys that race, uh, the oldest kid, uh, Cody, and then uh, my daughter, Allison, and then, of course, Angie. So I've got quite a few people to cook for. If I don't do a good job, man, they're going to be mad. So. Yeah, that's for sure. I see you got some pretty I good plates. I'm happy and helping me. So, <laughs> what size T-shirt do you wear? Do what? What size T-shirt do you wear? Uh, I'm an extra large. XL. Okay, hit me up on Facebook. Send me your address so I can um, send this out to you. Okay. You get it in the cool. seat in the seat guest, courtesy of Blue Line Graphics and Northwest Race Report for being on the show, and. uh we got to run. We got to finish the show out. Appreciate you. Hey, I, I appreciate, appreciate you being on the show, Shannon. And we're going to have you back on. Absolutely. Um, and we'll just touch base. If you come up with something new, whatever, be sure you tune into the BK this uh, coming up here in two weeks. It's going to be live on pay per view. And uh, keep up the good work. Hey, man, I, I appreciate it. it. It means a lot. And, and you know, I, I want to, you know, like I said, thank you guys for what you're doing. You know, I know it's a lot of energy and a lot of effort on your part, but, it, you know, it speaks volumes, and, and anybody that listens to the show or, or even keeps up with you online, you know, they I'm sure they'd say the same thing. Right on, man. We appreciate it. It's a lot of fun. It's people like you, oh, <coughs> excuse me, willing to share your knowledge and advice and stuff that, you know, um, it's, it's at the end of the day, this sport is all about relationships, right? So, um, 100%. That's where it is. So, I mean, um, we're out there helping the racers, helping each other, and that, that's how it works. Yeah, and, and that's what we need. I mean, even even up here with the with the junior UAS, um, you know, I'm I'm trying to you know be in on part of that, and you know that that's what I grew up on. We didn't have restrictor plate classes. We had kids stock appearing and adult stock appearing, and that was yep. It. You know, I, I learned to drive with 30-year-old men when I was 12. That's right. You know, it, was a, it was a heck of an experience. So, you know, I, I think a lot of stuff like that, you know, I, I try not to limit myself. Thanks to the wonder of the Internet, I, I try not to limit myself to any one area. You know, if, if those guys need help, uh, you know, guys across the country and world with the 206 program, you know, we work close with Briggs on that, you know, the internet's a great thing, so I can share information and knowledge with everybody, awesome. whether they want me to or not. So we love that about you. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Shannon Halbert, thanks for being on the show, man. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll be uh, we'll be in touch. Definitely. All right, thanks, guys. Y'all have a great night. You... I really appreciate it. Hey, you no too. problem, man. Thank you. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. All right, Shannon Halbert, what a great guy. GoFastHP.com is where you need to go. Uh, he does clutches for uh, everybody. So before we run out of time, we're going to get in. Uh, we're going to hear from uh, Lapping with Lippy. so uh, let's, let's get to it. Lapping with Lippy. Thank you very much, Terry. Tonight's Lapping with Lippies brought to you by Scott Seal Coat. For all your sealing and striping needs, go ahead and give Scott Seal Coat a call and we'll stripe it and seal it, whatever you got. So today we're going to we're going to keep on talking about driving. Uh, this is a big race coming up with the BK8 and we're uh, going to be seeing people here for the first time and some people haven't been here since the last time of the BK. So uh, you know, be sure and uh, you know, we we all got to get along out there on the track and so be sure and pack your patience and uh you know try and keep your emotions in check out there we uh 
we know that uh, I'm sounding like a broken record right now because I've covered a lot of this stuff before, but I'm hoping that if I keep doing it over and over and over again, everybody's going to start to think about it and it's going to sink in a little bit. So um, for those of you that travel uh, and you're going to be going to different tracks, whether it's to Salem for this uh, up and coming race or where, wherever you're traveling at, you know, take the time to look up these people's rules and, and go over those and, uh, you know, take a look at them all, all of them, not just the one that pertains to your class, but all of their rules and uh, specifically the ones for your class, though, because that's the one you're in. Right. And if you have any questions, get a hold of the promoter or ask at the driver's meeting uh, if you have questions about it. Don't wait till it's an issue and then make a big scene about it. At least try and educate yourself on their rules and their bylaws and the way they do things and ask questions. That's the biggest thing I can say. So, uh, you know, now back to the to the driving and uh you know you're an example out on the track when you're out there for other drivers and and youth out there so you know uh, be on your best behavior uh drive people the way you want to be driven own what you do if you screw up own it you screwed it up the other person didn't give them their spot back and you know take yours back behind them you know you screwed up they didn't basically so and and one other thing you know stop driving people to the bottom if they got enough horsepower to get underneath you they're probably faster than you are so a you know make it through the corner and try to get your position back after the next one and if you don't then they are faster than you so stop driving people to the bottom when they're underneath you you can protect all you want but once they get underneath you come on on. give them the space they're under you so uh and you know i'm not uh i'm not above or below this i've been kicked off of more than my share of tracks so you know that that kind of stuff happens i understand that but you know also you know say you're sorry you know when when you do do something wrong if you don't come over and say you're sorry to me afterwards then i think you did it on purpose and that's bad for you so when you uh when you say you're sorry it it goes a long ways and when somebody is saying they're sorry to you you know don't be a a d word to them Take their apology, you know. They took the time to at least tell you that they're sorry. So that t tells me that it was just a racing thing. When they don't come over and tell you or talk to you about it, they probably did mean to take you out. So do with that what you would, but that doesn't make anything any better. So, you know, in closing here, this is what I got to say. You know, keep your emotions in check. Pack your patience uh, take a look at the rules. It'll help you in the end. Own what you do and drive people the way you want to be driven and stop driving people to the bottom. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm over it now. No, that's, a, that's, a, that's awesome, man. That is, uh, that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. It's all there. It really is. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> awesome. Lapping with Lippy again. Keep that. Keep heed. Those are. Uh, it's important, especially coming up this this next uh, weekend. First thing I want to say is uh, tonight's show is brought to you uh, in help from Wicked Fabrication. Since two thousand and two, Wicked Fab has been providing the best in custom auto fab from mild to wild. Wicked Fabrication can get it done. Be sure you check them out on the web, www.wickedfab.com, or on Facebook, Wicked Fabrication. Craig Wick and his bunch are a good bunch of guys. Um, Not only do they do great hot rods and hate great hot rod work, but his kids can drive. That they can. The other thing, since we didn't have any sound earlier on, I, you know, I just wanted to let you know that, um, first thing, please stop by terrybridges.com and sign up to follow the show. There's no commitment there other than you'll just get free notifications when either we're on the air or uh, Lippy or I write a new post and, and post it on the page. That's all it is. But it does help us out. Um, it just kind of helps us look cool too, right? You know, whatever. So make sure you sign up for that. 
Um, we never will sell your email address. We will never send you junk because I hate that crap. So it'll that'll never happen. So please do that. And on each episode, please like the episode. It helps Spreaker move us up. We get some free stuff. They help, you know, uh, as the show gets better and better, bigger and bigger, they give you some free stuff and they actually give you uh, some free, uh, hey, this is one of the top shows, uh, you know, going on our Spreaker deal. So, it, you know, it, uh, Lippy says it a lot, but it does help us and, and uh, it's just a cool thing, you know, to see. We appreciate all the great comments, but also um, we'll take constructive criticism too so oh. if there's something you want to hear or something we're not covering um then by all means let us know i wanted to let you know coming up um here uh, next week part two of our uh tinkering and tuning racing's homework we're going to be talking about uh carburation and horsepower and torque and what it means to you um and and it's just going to be awesome. Our blue line uh, graphics in the seat guest is going to be Dustin Stevenson from Competition Carburetors. So I'm excited to talk to him uh, about some of the different things uh, that you can do carb wise. Um, and then starting uh, February 10th, uh, we kick off our Cage Cup coverage as we start getting ready. Our guests are going to be some of the Cage Cart gurus. And uh, so it's going to be great. Our guest is going to be Kyle Hostad. He's going to kick things off. And then uh, a couple weeks after that, on the 17th, we're going to start a series called uh, The Three Ps, People, uh, Process, and Product. We're going to uh, have a great, a cool uh, club competition. Uh, so more about that as it as it gets closer. But um, we got some exciting things. And then a couple weeks after that, we're going to do the Three P thing as it applies to uh, racing. So lots of good uh Stuff coming up on the Northwest Race Report. Very excited about that. We have lots of exciting things coming up, and the the new uh, little contest we're going to be doing is going to be really fun. I can't wait till that takes off. And uh, I just have to say, you know, that Shannon Halbert that was on the show earlier, he is a great guy. He has a great online presence. Uh, you know, clutches he does, yes, that's for sure. Um, but he uh, also is a great wealth of information. He, You'll find him online all the time answering people's questions and uh, giving his insights into things. And uh, I just can't say enough about that guy and how uh, – great he is to all of us out there so uh, uh thank you to him yeah he is he's a he's a cool guy and uh, he was all excited he was all nervous but you know big shout out to dave chisholm too because he said he is the clutch guru so um man you know let's support those that support us and so if you got a clutch or you need clutch stuff be sure you go to gofasthp.com or halbert performance shannon halbert uh because the northwest race report is behind him all the way Yes, he doesn't just do clutches also. If I'm not mistaken, he also has a, a quite a few other things available to him that he sells as he was letting into, uh, you know, uh, uh, replacement parts for your clutches and, and other uh, go-kart oriented stuff. So hit him up. Give him a, give him a chance to fill your needs. Absolutely. He's a, he's a quality dude, uh, no, no doubt about it. So big shout out to him. Thanks, Shannon Halbert, for being on the show. Oh. I've got a couple things for Salem down there. Uh, if you guys are in the UAS class, pay attention. The UAS class at Salem, uh, race monitors are mandatory. So if you uh, don't have one, you need to be getting one. I've been told that you can find them online uh, around $80 uh, on up. Uh, so, you know, be aware if you're going to be going down there for the UAS class, the race monitors are uh, mandatory. Uh, it is uh, strongly suggested for the Yamaha classes as well, uh, but they are mandatory in the UAS. Yes, and I was going to say, you know, what would be kind of cool is, you know, at the one of these times, I, I think it would be cool. Um, a big shout out to Kevin Lau, who's on the show, Dave Chisholm awesome uh jay cobb right on man thank you so much for that comment uh kevin Lau, thanks for being on the show um i was gonna say we should get a group of salem guys the yamaha guys or whatever and buzz up to monroe and invade uh one of their sunday shows i think that would be killer uh you know i i would be all down with that but it, it is a totally different track than any of us are used to racing on so the setup stuff is 100 percent way different than what we usually do so 
you know, it, 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 it is a fun class. They have lots of them up there. It moves very fast. Um, and uh, it, it, you know, everybody should do it once. Abs- absolutely. So sorry about the technical difficulties. Thanks for um, letting us know there uh, on that. I'll make sure that doesn't happen again. Gosh darn it. Um, and uh, gosh, this week, uh, the two-day show is back at Salem. Um, so be sure you, uh, if, if, if you're not running, um, you know, go ahead and uh, head down and, and, you know, hang out. Support the uh, cage cart. Again, next week we're going to have part two of the tinkering and tuning, the racing homework. We're going to be talking to you uh, with uh, Dustin Stevenson from Competition Carburetors. We're going to be talking torque and horsepower, so that'll be a good little um, segment there. And then um, also uh, with that, that'll be our BK breakdown. Lippy and I will be breaking down the BK, going through uh, everything. Yeah, we'll be going down the list on who's entered into what class. Thank you, Matt Streby. Anybody that is not signed up for that, get a hold of Matt Streby and give them their information, and you're getting down to crunch time. That's correct. And uh, don't forget, Fast 4 Media and the Northwest Race Report will be uh, bringing you live coverage of the BK on Saturday. Uh, it's a pay-per-view deal. It's like 3 bucks. We'll get all that stuff up online for you so you can have it and check us out. Lippy and I are going to be doing a uh, pre-race show and a post-race show. It's called the Before the Green, and Loading Up is our post-race show. So it uh, should be pretty darn cool. It's going to be live on the internet, courtesy of Fast 4 Media. Um, boy, congratulations to Dan Watkins, who was P1 tonight. Blue Line Graphics, uh, Brian Squiniga was second. Asuchich was out. Just uh, He was just off the podium a little bit. So sorry about the technical difficulties, guys. We'll make sure that that's squared away for next week. Uh, be sure you stop by terrybridges.com and uh, sign up for the show. Like the like each and every show, Lippy, uh, as they say, on in life and on the racetrack, if somebody is taking the low side and going low, what do you do? I'm going to the high side, and I'm going there with BLG. Absolutely. Thanks to Blue Line Graphics, Wicked Fabrication, Scott's Seal Coat, uh, for their great sponsorship of the Northwest Race Report. And uh, I guess, Lippy, we'll, we'll see everybody uh, next week, 6.30. Guaranteed no technical difficulties. And uh, we love you guys. Thanks for being here. Thank you. God bless Broadcaster, the one and only Gary Bridges.